All right, guys, this is going to be your intro and safety video on this tool here, the scroll saw. Um, you might be in my intro class, my advanced class, or even in tech theater, and you all need to know this information. You're all going to have to pass a safety test on this tool. I'm going to show you in this video how to use this uh, correctly, safely. We're going to talk about exactly what's going on with this tool, what does it actually do, because I believe if you understand how it works, then you'll be able to use it safely and effectively. So uh, let's get started with the scroll saw introduction and safety video. All right, guys, first of all, let's go over some of the parts and um, we'll launch out from there. So first of all, uh, a lot of tools um, have a, what's called a, a flat, you know, horizontal surface like this. It's called a, a table. And that's going to be a really important vocab word for you to just lock away in your brain there. Uh, it's going to come up a lot. We have a flat horizontal surface. That's a table. Um, so the table, of course, is where your piece of work, your work piece, or your, your piece of wood is going to rest. You always want your piece of wood flat against the table. Um, let's talk about how the saw actually cuts. There's a blade, as you can see right in here, and you need to know how to take that blade out. So this, this back here is the tension. Can we see that in the camera? Let's move it up here. This right here is an important lever for you to know about. This is the tension adjustment lever and you can push it down and you can um, go up and down with it but do not turn it left and right lift that up to take the tension off the blade there's two arms that are attached with a long threaded screw back here um, and one of the arms comes out this direction another arm is lower down you can't see it very well and they're attached back here so this right here this there's a screw with threads and as you tighten it it's going to pull those arms closer together and because they're closer together back here they're further apart in the front and that's what's going to create your tension so you want to lift this up to just take off most or all of the tension and then your blade comes out very easily so let's look at the blade this blade has a bunch of teeth and you see that in the video here they all point in the same direction um, they point down. Now you want to make sure that you don't put your blade in upside down like this. So if you put your blade in like this, what do you think is going to happen? Well, you see those teeth, they will grab the wood and they're going to push your wood up. So as the blade is, the blade moves like this, right? And so as the blade grabs the wood, it's going to want to turn that wood up. And you don't want that. You want the wood to go down because remember we have it against the table. So the table is going to help hold that wood in place if the teeth are like this and they're going to be grabbing the, the wood and, and forcing it down, okay? Here's another important thing that you need to know about. This is called the table insert. And you're going to want to take that out, just pop that out real quick when you're installing a new blade. Now why would you need to install a blade or, or take the blade out ever? Uh, why don't you just do that for us, Mr. Broadway? Well, there's a really good reason and I'm going to move the camera over here to show you uh, a little better view of what's going on here. But let's say in our first project in the intro class, you're going to make a three-piece puzzle. And you're going to need to maybe, you know, not, not just in the three-piece puzzle, but in different projects that you do, you're going to use a similar technique. Well, here I've got a piece of wood that's got a hole in it. And let's say I wanted to cut out a shape, like a circle in the wood, or maybe some kind of shape, like a heart shape, or whatever, whatever you're trying to do. And you want that shape to be cut out of the middle of a piece of wood. So in other words, you don't want to cut in from the side, right? You want to leave that intact. And you just want to cut out a piece in the middle. Well, the scroll saw can help you do that. You're going to take the blade out and you're going to feed it through this hole. Okay, and then reinstall the blade. Now for the sake of the video, I'm going to set this piece of wood to the side so you can kind of see what goes on down here. So you see right here, there is a fork shaped bit and you've got these pins on the end of your blade. First thing you want to do is take the, the pins and grab the bottom right here this, of this fork in the bottom because there's one on the top as well up here. And with the tension adjustment in the up position, we're going to press down on the top arm and your blade is going to stay in place. Now you're not set to go yet. Even though the blade is, is in there correctly, we have to return tension into the system and we're going to do that by pressing down over here okay now one trick I like to tell people is when you've got your blade installed correctly you should be able to kind of like pluck it and it will make that sound 
So if you do that and you pluck it and you hear that sound, you know you're, you're good to go. Um, here's what it would sound like without enough tension on it. Something like that. It's kind of like a tuning a guitar string up. Okay, so you've got a nice high pitch little tinny sound there. Then you're going to flip your, uh, or I should say slide your table insert back in place. And now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to cut with this machine once you've got your blade installed. There's a couple controls over here. Here is the speed adjustment. And you don't want that to be peaked out all the way over here at high. And you can go faster than all the way at low, just somewhere in the middle. About 50% is a good place to start. Um, but I can't think of a reason why you'd ever need to be at 100% on this thing. But what's more important than that is that you use this safety feature right here. And this is called your pressure foot. And that's another vocab word you need to know, your pressure foot. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use that. But first we need to draw ourselves a line that we're going to cut. Okay, so the cool thing about a scroll saw, um, or this saw right here, the coping saw, which is a a hand-powered version of the scroll saw, which we'll learn about later. Um, so with, with both of these saws, because of the shape of the blade, the size of the blade, the thickness of the blade, the flexibility of the blade, it, uh, it doesn't cut in straight lines as easily as it cuts in curves. So you could cut any sort of shape you wanted to. Now you can't make a perfectly 90 degree corner. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't just turn with the blade. You couldn't bring it up here and then Oops, sorry. Couldn't like bring it up here and then all of a sudden turn. You have to make a little bit of a radius in your turn like, like that. More of, a, more of a curve is what you'd have to do. Um, but there are ways to make 90 degree crisp corners, which we'll talk about in the three-piece puzzle lessons. For now, though, I just want to demonstrate how to make a safe cut. Um, first thing you need to do is always wear your safety glasses when you're working with power tools or even most hand tools. So I'm going to put those on my face. Um, next thing you want to do, guys, is before you even turn this on, of course, you need to make sure the blade is in place. Um, if, if this tension isn't correct, or if you feel like it's not correct, ask me um, for help. Uh, but if it's not correct, guys, and you turn this thing on, your blade is going to come out and you could damage the blade um, or maybe accidentally hurt yourself. Now, this pressure foot right here, this assembly right here with this, there's a long piece of metal here. And then there's this fork-shaped thing right here and a knob over here on the left side of the machine. What I want you to do is just slightly loosen that, like so. It's gonna fall down to your piece and then tighten it a little bit. You, so you see, we're only moving it like this much. Less than a quarter of a turn, really. And now, you don't need to press it down onto your wood, just let gravity hold this thing onto your wood because when you tighten it, it actually kind of pulls down toward the table a little bit more. And so what's this gonna do? It's gonna keep your your workpiece flat against the table for you. It's going to help you do that, which is a really nice thing. Um, so when you're all ready to go, we're going to go ahead and turn the machine on. But what I want you to do is, with your fingers, make sure that your fingers never enter into the area of this table insert, okay? So just keep them back. It's okay, like, to be honest with you, practically speaking, you are going to push back here in front of the blade, right, at certain times. You want to keep your fingers, you know, away from the path of that blade in front of it, just in case something slips or your wood is softer than you might think. And you push, you don't want to push your thumb or finger into the blade as it's on. Um, but if you do ever put your hands in front of the blade like this, just make sure that you never go inside this black circle. Okay, let's make that agreement. So anyways, back to the cut. We're going to lower the pressure foot, tighten it down. Okay. This is going to help keep our wood against the table, and we're going to turn the, the machine on and watch as I cut, see how fast I go. Just switch down here. I'll go ahead and turn the speed up a little bit. So you see, well, as we turn, we want to also cut through the wood. You can't just turn without cutting any wood because you're going to twist the blade. It's going to be caught between the piece of wood there and you, if you turn it, then you'd be twisting the blade in place. So you need to make sure that you're, you're moving forward as you're turning.
All right, you saw how I kept my hands far away from the blade. I was able to do that because my piece was so big. So um, that was easy. And so you see, guys, uh, with a scroll saw, it would be easy to make something like a, a puzzle piece where two things fit together like that. Um, also, you know, you could cut out any shape that's got curves in it, like a heart like that. You could cut that out really easily. Um, if you wanted to cut out a certain, you know, inside shape like this, we could cut this circle. We could delete that circle and be left with uh, the wood around it um, by drilling a hole. So we'll talk about the, uh, the drill press, which is the other tool you would need to do that. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and go over some safety questions. These are questions that would end up on your safety uh, test that you're going to have to take. Um, the scroll saw, before you change the blade, you need to disconnect the scroll saw. That means unplug it. Um, that's one question on your safety test. Uh, safety test says use the right type of blade for the work that you're going to be doing. Um, different blades have different tooth counts and, um, and different shapes as well in some cases. Uh, we only really have one type of blade uh, for the work that we do in here, so you won't really have to worry about that. But do, do realize that you don't want to use a metal blade, uh, or, a, or I should say a blade that's meant to be cutting metal uh, to cut wood or vice versa. So just use the right type of blade for the work to be done. You want to adjust the pressure foot. Uh, that's misspelled right there. We need to fix that. Not presser foot, but pressure foot. Um, so again, the pressure foot is here. Make sure that you use and engage that pressure foot. You're gonna put, again, you're gonna put your piece here, drop it down and lock it in place, and that's all you gotta do. Make sure you do that. And, and I'll be honest with you guys, there are some times where that kind of gets in the way. If your piece is a little bit smaller, maybe it's getting caught back here in this little groove. Um, there's a slight height difference between the table and the table insert. Um, if you are ever pushing your piece and it doesn't seem to be moving forward, just relieve the pressure up here on the pressure foot for a moment, push it over that little hump, and then you can re-engage it. The thing is, guys, this isn't absolutely necessary, but it does help keep your wood against the, the table. Let me show you what would happen if you didn't use it, potentially. See that rattling where the, the wood grabs, or the blade grabs the wood and it bangs it against the table? You're not going to cut as efficiently if you don't use the pressure foot, and it's going to be a really annoying sound. And if I ever hear that sound, I'll just be like, engage the pressure foot. Okay, um, let's see. The saw should be completely stopped before you back out of a cut. So uh, sometimes you'll be cutting, uh, let's say you know you're cutting up to here and then you need to make a turn. Well, you can't turn, as I mentioned earlier, you can't just make this turn, right? You'd have to maybe cut up to this point and then back out. Well, if you're gonna back out um, of a complicated cut like that, you need to turn the saw off and then gently um, you know, wiggle your way out. Um, so yeah, that's an important safety thing to be mindful of. Twisting the blade or forcing the cut could blank the blade. It can, it can actually break the blade. As I mentioned earlier, you can deform the blade um, so that it's really not usable, but you could also just go ahead and break the thing. Um, so don't do that. Be careful not to twist or force your cut. You can turn, just don't turn too fast. Be sure the blade in the scroll saw is sharp and in good condition. Now you don't want to test the sharpness of a blade with your finger, of course, because you could cut your finger. Um, usually the sharpness of a blade isn't an issue uh, in my class because what ends up happening, guys, and this is perfectly normal, um, the pins that hold this blade in place, they tend to wear out and break before the blade loses its sharpness. If you ever break the pins on a blade, don't worry. Just come show me and I'll give you a new one. You're not in trouble, that happens. Um, let's see. You do wanna make sure the blade is sharp though. If you're ever using a dull knife or a dull blade to do any work, it can be more dangerous than a sharp knife because, or a sharp blade because you're trying to push harder to compensate for the dullness of the blade. And if something slips, then all that potential energy of you pushing hard is gonna be transferred potentially into the blade. So I don't want that to happen to you. Uh, let's see, always keep your hands and fingers away from the area directly in front of the blade. Uh, I do want you to make sure that happens, guys, um, because, um, as I said, if you are pushing or something slips and your hand is in front of the blade, then it's, of course, gonna go into the blade. All this potential energy of me pushing here 
if it gets released by accident, well, I don't want it to accidentally go into the blade. So keep it you know, over here. Keep your hands spread far away from the area directly in front of the blade. You need to be setting the speed of the saw, not maxing it out, okay? Oop, you can't see me doing that. You need to not max it out. You need to keep it kind of in the middle. So if you kind of feel like this is the start, that's the finish, just keep it right in the middle, okay? That will be a good starting spot for you. The tension adjustment rod back here in the back of the saw, it can be adjusted, but it doesn't really need to be because everything in here should be staying the same. You can lift it up like this to remove the blade. That's perfectly fine. But when it's time to re-engage it, please do not twist it left or right like this. So that would be loosening it if you did that. You don't really need to mess with that. That's fine if you hear that little sound like that. That's just the blade settling into the shoe. Um, there's, a, there's a shoe on top and a shoe on the bottom. And uh, those little pins, they might be slightly off center. And that's okay. They will kind of snap into place when you put the tension on. Uh, but please do not turn it left and right. Now one way to remember this, guys, is if you say yes, you nod your head up and down like this to say yes, right? So you can go up and down with it. If you say no, you'd be shaking your head left and right. Do not turn it left or right, okay? If you feel like it needs to be adjusted, just let Mr. Broadway know, okay? When the blade is installed correctly, you can see the teeth are facing downward. If you install the blade upside down, then the teeth are going to want to pull your wood upward. And I don't want that to happen. I want the, the wood, your workpiece, to go down into the table because that table's here to support your piece of wood. So when the blade is installed correctly, the teeth are pointing down. Very important. All right? So this concludes your scroll saw tutorial and safety information. Uh, if you watch this video, you should be ready to take your scroll saw safety test.